In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to use Excel's solver to find the optimal price that maximizes the profit. Again, you open up a lemon stand at the Houston Rodeo Show, and following on the finances, the variable cost, the fixed cost, what is the optimal price that maximizes the profit. Here the demand curve is 65,000 minus 9,000 times price. That's how demand changes with price. And again, the formula for calculating revenue and profit. So here we have put $4 as the starting price. It doesn't really matter. We can put $1 here because we have no idea what the optimal price is. So now let's continue to complete the overall calculation. So demand is equal to 65,000 minus 9,000 times price here. And so I'll be three and enter. So that's 56,000, not dollar. Change this to general. So that's the demand in units. And we already have the variable cost information. We have the fixed cost information. We can calculate the revenue, which is equal to the demand here times the price and enter. And the profit is equal to, again, the formula is here, equal to parenthesis, the price level here minus the variable cost and close the parenthesis and that multiplied into the demand and then minus the fixed cost here $45,000 and enter so we're actually losing money because we price so low that uh, our profit margin is unable to cover the fixed cost that's why we are having a loss of $14,000 and $200 so clearly this $1 price is bad and we want to find the optimal price by maximizing the profit. So Excel offers a powerful tool to do this. It's the solver. Go to data and click here. If you have not yet set up solver, check out the video on how to set up solver in Excel. So click on solver. And uh, in the solver window, the top part is to set objective. So this is the value you want to either maximize, minimize, or set it to a specific value. Here, we are already focusing on the cell B8, and we want to maximize the profit so we want to maximize cell, the value in cell b8 by changing the variable cells so the second part of the parameter you want to set is what do you want to change in order to maximize this profit and this variable we want to change is the price so we want to change price in order to maximize profit so in order to set up solver properly you also need to add some constraints. So what the constraints do is the constraints tells Excel that when you look for the optimal price, don't even look at a million dollars. It's too far and it's a waste of time to search whether that's an optimal price. Having good constraints, generally speaking, improves solver's efficiency. So here we can set the constraints we really know very little about what the upper bound of the price is. But we could just set a relatively high boundary. Let's say we know that if we set the price of $10 or above at a rodeo show, this lemonade price is probably too much. So we can add a constraint. And the constraint is on these values of price. So we know $10 is too much. So the cell reference of price should be, and the options are less than or equal to, equals to, larger than or equal to, being integer, being binary, or being all different. 
and for us we just stick with less than or equal to and we know 10 is too much so definitely would it be less than or equal to ten dollars and click OK so keep in mind that you can add multiple constraints to this and here we can add a lower constraint as well so by default Excel is gonna assume these values to be all non-negatives but here let's set a lower constraint again on price so as you can see here that uh, when we set one dollars we are incurring a loss which means we shouldn't even be doing the business at one dollar so the price definitely should be larger than or equal to one dollar here and click OK so now we have two constraints that the price will be larger than one and less than ten and here you can change these constraints by using these buttons or delete certain constraints you can reset which will allow you to reset all the constraints and the below the constraint box Excel would make unconstrained variables non-negative that is if we didn't add this lower bound of one dollar Excel would automatically force price to be non-negative we can keep this but we don't really need this here since we already have the lower bound and the next part in solver is to select a solving method Excel has three different solving methods in solver GRG nonlinear simplex LP and evolutionary to get a better idea of how these different solving methods differ watch the lecture video and for this one we know that we're going to select the GRG nonlinear because the relationship between price and the profit is not a linear relationship so we cannot use simplex LP and we don't really need evolutionary because GRG nonlinear is much more efficient at solving the problems it can solve and when you select this solver there are also options you can do so when you click on options you're going to see another window here so for most of these settings we don't need to change them unless a specific problem requires us to here's one setting that you should always set is the maximum time because solver has the intention to kick you out too quickly when the problem is complicated especially when you use the evolutionary solver so let's set the maximum time in seconds to a slightly larger number than the default I usually set it to either 300 or 600 seconds that is either 5 or 10 minutes and uh, for this problem really we didn't need to do it but let's just for discussion's sake set it to 300 seconds maximum time whichever method you use you can set additional options you can do this on GRG nonlinear or evolutionary and uh, since we are using the GRG nonlinear solving method let's take a look and within GRG nonlinear there is the convergence the convergence tells the engine how close do I need to be at the maximum point so having a very tiny convergence number would take the engine longer to get really close to the optimal point and the default is fine uh, sometimes we reduce this by reducing this number it allows the engine to get a little bit more wiggle room around the optimal point so the engine can actually reach the solution faster for derivatives there's a forward and central these are just technical terms on where the derivatives are taken for the optimal solution don't worry about it they don't influence the results all that much so just leave it as forward here the multi start is something you actually want to pay attention to especially when the problem is complicated so the reason being that uh, sometimes a solution may have ups and downs then Excel sometimes get trapped at a local optimal solution instead of finding the universal one so it uh, gets into a small mountain top 
but not getting to the real peak of the mountain. So multi-start is what helps you to overcome this. Although for the current problem we're solving, this is unnecessary. But let me just check this. And we're done with options. Click OK. Now we are back to the solver interface. Since we have done everything we need to set, just click on solve. Because this is such a simple problem, Excel should be able to solve it instantly. So as you see, the solver results, it's done. Solver converged in probability to global solution. And then once that's over, click OK. Now you can see that in this problem, the maximum profit is $58,000 and the optimal price is three dollars and 84 cents remember when we were using the data table we know it's around three dollars and 75 cents we don't quite know where the actual number is so using solver now we know that the optimal price is three dollars and 84 cents that finishes this video